grown man cries watching children's cartoons. There's a couple of times that I cry watching anime. Very rare. Genuinely very rare. I did not cry in Bunny Girl Senpai Finale. The Little Sister Diary Notebook didn't do anything to me. We just finished Season 3 of SAO. I don't want to spoil any deaths, but I did not cry. I did cry for Jujutsu Kaisen. Don't want to again, no spoilers. I cry for Oshinoko. I cry for ReZero and I think at the end of the day, it has to do with like how much like you you can relate. If you can empathize and relate to a certain character or scenario, the more impactful it is. But like, I don't have regression powers. Like, why did I cry? I thought about it and I think it's as simple as this. It's the act of trying so hard. Trying so hard to make it and then having all your efforts just not acknowledged, not w just wasted. Nobody remembers anything you did. And like, it's crazy to think the past episodes, ever since we spawned at Roswell's mansion, the interactions we had with Rem and Ram, they were all so suspicious of us. And I knew, we know that they were suspicious, but in the perspective of Subaru, everything looked so genuine, so wholesome. The smile Rem gave, the interactions we had with Ram, even Rem saying, my sister is too kind, right? Everything was a fucking lie. I don't know exactly how much of it was a lie. I don't know if the smile was a lie, but we were never that close. And Subaru, I guess, was too prideful to ever imagine that this was never, you know, what was actually going on. But what did we also learn? Which was called anti Emilia faction, which is counterintuitive because I thought that the because Emilia, I thought that she was like a witch and some sort of holy church was going to like counter that. But no, there's a witch's cult that is anti Emilia faction. There is also the Witch's Stench from Subaru because he is loved by the Witch of Envy that gets worse with every single repeat. There is also the mechanic where if we try to tell people about her power, the Witch's hand will like grab his heart. I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to do after that, but there is that like fear. So he's not going to be able to like tell people, which is a nice way to kind of like... It'd be two hacks if we just let other people know that we have the regression powers. Rem and Ram's family also was apparently fucked up by the witch's cult. And if you just think about it, every run he gets smellier and smellier. It's even more suspicious that he's affiliated with the witch's cult. And because Rem and Ram's family also got fucked by the witch's cult, creates more of a reason for them to hate us. But hey, we got Betty. We got Betty and for the first time we reached out for help, she saved us. And we have a new run happening and I'm just gonna assume that there is still an infinite amount of regressions we can do. We were scared to jump because obviously well, we didn't go past three runs last time, or four or three runs, right? So it's just like, what's gonna happen if I die this time? Well, I think we're gonna be fine. And this time, we really need to just figure out who the fuck is this shaman? <laughs> which could be the fucking bald dog, which is so stupid. <laughs> the rabies theory. The rabies theory. So we go and burn down the village in this run, and let's see what happens. Let's begin today's reaction. And we're good. The imagery, every time we see this dark hand reaching out for Subaru, and I just, it's the Witch of Envy, right? It has to be. That's what the imagery is in the openings and the endings as well. And now we're back. Rem and Ram should be here. And we probably stink like shit, right? They're still roasting us. But, um... The fear of Rem and Ram, I think, will be surpassed because they... It was told that... They were the ones holding the hands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were the ones holding our hands, I, I think. That was last episode, right? Yeah, yeah. And because of that, we can now look beyond Rem just torturing us. It's actually crazy. If I kill you too fast, I can't get any information out of you. <laughs> Heal. <laughs> like, holy shit. Rem is... Oh my god. We're back. Rem is alive this time. And like, why did Rem die last time? Because we were hidden in the library. Because it was the curse. And we're trying to figure out who the shaman is. And if Rem is the one that went into the village that day, remember? When Subaru and Rem were supposed to go into the village and get groceries together, and that's when she smiled? If she went in solo, and she got rabies? I'm telling you, man, we just need to get rid of that village. We need to start eliminating variables one by one until something changes. <laughs> The handhold. Does it feel the same? Yeah, the handhold, right? Betty told us. 
きっと生まれてきたのが間違いだ。ちのちのことを考えると笑えない気がする。Also, is it even more suspicious that like he woke up stinky as fuck as the stench of the witch is even stronger? And he grabs onto Rem and Ram, who were previous targets by the witch's cult, and say it's true after all. Is, is that bad? I think it's kind of bad, but the soundtrack is making me think this is okay. Ram's got the best jokes, man. Maybe. Do we smell? Prince! <laughs> no one's making a comment about the smell, though, huh? I don't know, like, how apparent it is, right? Like, I have no clue what this smell is supposed to smell like. Can everyone smell it? Can nobody, can only specific people smell it? But, like, no one's making a comment about it, huh? Ah, Back to Butler. Okay. Hmm, the side eye from Rem. Remember, it's not the hair. She's always watching him. But hey, he's not cutting his hands anymore. Look at that. He learned. Yep. Roswell, too. Scary, dude. What is that power? Yeah. <laughs> Subaru gonna learn swordsmanship, bro? Like, hmm. Well, it would be nice if Reinhardt would teach us swordsmanship, but we'll see about that. Gekihara. <laughs> Emilia, talking to the lesser spirit, her contract once a day. Spirit arts. Spirit Surroundings. Individual mana versus surroundings. Sounds like spirit arts is gonna be even better, right? That sounds like an individual's mana pool. Well, it depends if you have like a fucking monster with like a huge mana pool, but okay. Internal versus external. Whether you use a gate, that's right. The magic needs to pass through the gate to use it, but there's also a media, which is like an item that can use magic without being using a gate. Interesting system. Do we have uh, an active gate? Is it working? Figure out your attribute. Probably something fucking sinister, bro, because the witch loves him. Probably some like dark shit, right? It's gotta be. Okay, there's no dark. Fire, water, wind, and earth. Honestly, I don't know. Earth? I don't know. Ram looked like she was using wind magic yesterday, right? Because, like, there was these, like, invisible lines, shing, shing, and then, like, the aura around her, right? What is it? Fire? Cool to guy. Oh! Wait, you said there's only four! What the fuck is a shadow? But. Looks pretty sinister. Rare? Okay, okay. What's shadow? Yeah, you lied to me. There's gotta be light and dark, right? Like any basic RPG system, any gacha game combat, right? There's the RGB element units, then there's a specific light and dark units, right? Shadow and light. Okay, okay. Is it? Okay. Sounds like debuffs. Honestly, utility wise, that sounds pretty useful, but not really flashy, you know, like fire columns of pillar attacks and crazy attacks like that. Utility debuffs. Honestly, you shouldn't look down on debuffs. Debuffs are very useful. I, I, and I mean, we're watching Failure Frame right now, right? The bro just only does debuffs. I don't think he's going to be able to just use Paralyze and Poison, but like, I think that debuffs are very useful. Blinding spell? Shamak? Shamak. Let's see it. Shamak. Oh, we already got cast to Shamak? Oh, this is scary, dude. What the fuck? What the? 
<gasps> PTSD! PTSD! <laughs> no. We gotta put on a strong face though, right? That shit was actually scary. <laughs> Alright, Yes, teach me, teach me. I still would have loved Roswell to teach us because he's the greatest magic user in Lugunica, but... Alright, Puck is fucking train us. Alright, right. explodes. Explodes? Like he's gonna fuck up. Alright. <laughs> yeah, fantasizing is what you do best. He's even making the sound effect, man. He's even making the sound effect. Is that his gate? So what? Is this supposed to be like the shadow mana attributes? And like that white thing is the gate? <laughs> I mean, this also accomplishes the same thing, right? What's well, Shamak? You make the enemy blinded and, you know, debuffed and they can't see shit, right? This pretty much a smokescreen. <laughs> All right, not bad, I guess. What happened with the gate? Okay. That was a failure. <laughs> He has never used magic before. Mana ignored your will. He can't control the mana. A soy sauce bottle with the loose cap? Kind of, I guess. So it's all about proficiency. He's never obviously used magic before because he's an Isekai character. The more you practice, the more he can will his mana to go through the gate. If you don't do that, this shit happens and it's just boom. Right, you're going to be too tired to work, right? Your mana is pretty much your life force. Very determined this round. Oh. What'd she give us? Swallow. What'd she give us? Zenzu bean? Alright. Cool, MP beans. Single thank you is worth more than a million sorry. Yeah, this is not a situation you should be saying sorry and apologizing. You should say thank you, acknowledge the other person's efforts. True. Nice. Neh. Neh. Alright, first night. So. <laughs> he just loves pitting Ram's hair, huh? What, what is going on with these two? Never Ram. It's always Ram. He's sus? He's thinking? Excessively quick-witted. So your sister does not act rashly. Did she act rashly the last episode? Give the proper warnings. I wonder, did Rem act on her own accord? I thought that Roswell ordered Rem to do it last episode. But uh, be careful, Rem's about to fucking just end him right now. Did you? No. I do not think so. You can think that. Based on this look, I don't know. It's pretty scary right now, man. That's right, the shaman. Eliminate the variables. Think about the different things that's happened. The village, bro. What the fuck was that? <laughs> The forehead of Betty is so shiny. Don't get cursed. You gotta be proactive. Don't be reactive. Right. They're dormant. Betty couldn't do them. Got it. No. Oh, she mentioning it. Kunka, kunka. Okay. Obviously, we're stinky. Which of envy? She said that line too. Envy. Oh. <gasps> we said the forbidden name. Lore. Long ago, she devoured the other six witches. So there's gonna be every witch for the seven deadly sins. But she's envious. She ate them? She devoured them. So she became like the apex witch. She just like collected all the powers of the different witches. And 
She devoured them and then, okay. Drain the half the world dry. I suppose she's the worst of the worst. Okay, I mean, if you basically go around just eliminating half the world, right? Of course, it's going to be that big of a taboo. What did the dragon do there that time? Start for love. And she favors Subaru. The witch's scent is like proof of her, like, her favoritism was what that was mentioned last episode. So the witch loves Subaru. She wants to love him. Okay. When did she find Subaru? Before he got re Isekai here? Did, did she pick him up at the 7-Eleven Mart and transport him here because he was so hot and cool? I doubt it. But okay, she's starved for love. She's envious of love and she wants to feel it. She doesn't understand human language. Okay. okay. She was sealed by the powers of a dragon, a hero, and a sage. Well, the dragon we probably can assume is the person, you know, that has the contract with the royal family of Dragon Kingdom of Lugunica that exists beyond the Great Waterfall. A hero? I don't think Reinhardt is old enough to be there, right? Well, then again, Reinhardt's super OP that maybe he was like one year old in his diaper. And due to his bullshit powers, he was able to help. Who knows? And then there's a sage. Hero, sage, dragon. Okay. Yo, this lore drop is crazy, Betty. More. More Betty. Satella. Yep. I don't know. Why would she... Because, like, why would Amelia say that in the first run? To confirm Subaru's ignorance? To see if he truly is not from here? To see if he would not give a fuck? If I said that I'm Satella, would you still accept me if I was? I'm not sure. Amelia has no fear of death? Amelia is insane. Well, that's what Betty's just saying, right? I think Amelia's pretty normal. Unless we're only seeing like one side of Amelia. And like we have an Amelia of Emilia a ton. But what if she's a crazy insane bitch behind the doors? Right? I don't know. She seemed pretty rational and normal. Yeah, you got dragged into this shit. You threw yourself into this shit. That was very interesting, huh? Yeah, sure, it's a legend has it, right? Alright, it's it's Legend has it, but like what? Were we gonna just not go off of this shit? I'm gonna treat this shit like the fucking Bible, bro. Right? Like, all of this shit. Dragon, sage, a hero. Her body, the flesh was not able to be defeated. So is she just dormant somewhere? She's sealed off, right? She's just waiting. Well, usually, whenever... Like, I'm gonna treat this Witch of Envy like a demon lord, right? And a demon lord needs to be awakened. What is necessary to awaken Witch of Envy, Satella? Subaru's love? Subaru needs to declare his love for Satella and he will... I don't know. I don't know, but couple important things going on here, man. Couple important things going on here, man. Just a Dragon Sage hero, love. She, she yearns the love and... Subaru is him, I guess, and why does she favor him over anything? Beats me. Good morning! Good morning. If I showed up to work and my coworkers were saying this shit at 9 in the morning, I'd be like, please, please let me drink my coffee first. Victory! Like the, you know, Tork did that once. Emily did too, I think. I'll enjoy my servant's life to the fullest again because I'm being whipped around by the maids. Lap pillow? Lap pillow? I'll come my rest head in your lap. Alright, we gonna get a lap pillow soon? I wonder how Amelia feels about that. Nobody asked. Nobody fucking asked, bro. Ooh. 
we just got cucked by her dad. Bro, how the fuck? Because, like, Puck is like her dad, right? They're like a family. Wait, what? We... Okay, fine. No no way. Way. We can't even compete with this little cat, bro. We're so fucked. Oh. Oh, Wrath! 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 Seven deadly sins mentioned! Oh. It feels like he's trying too hard. That whole bit there, he's trying to be cheerful, but like, I don't know, that felt cringe and forced. What? Oh shit! Yo, he's fucking up. He's trying too hard right now, right? Yo, Rem is gonna think. The fuck? Yo, Rem gonna kill you? Yo, Rem gonna kill you at this rate? You're the one that's gonna get hurt at this rate. Cause Puck can read the mind. True. You're gonna fuck it up, though. That absent look from Rem, I don't like it at all, dude. We're trying way too hard this time. Ah, True. You creep. <laughs> you fucked up and cleaned up after your own mistake. You think this is being productive? Oh! 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 I bet Ram never did, and now that was like a double fuck up there, bro. Stop. Stop, dude. Dude, I thought he would figure this shit out and actually, like, have a good run. This is already fucked. That's so bad. That's so bad. <laughs> the sewing is very cute. But it's even making him sick, huh? Trying this fucking hard right now. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Is what Rem's already said 20 times. That face, bro? That's wild. Someone's like telling you a story? Whoa, crazy, dude. Rem does not give a fuck about your story, dude. You are on death row right now. <laughs> so <laughs> bad. <laughs> she wants to stop. <laughs> You're such a sinful girl. You're guilty. You're trying way too hard. <laughs> I totally get it, right? Because he's so determined this time to correct everything. But... It's just like it's counterproductive. Your desire to do better is actually working against you. We need to fucking chill the fuck out. There's a lot of pressure on him. I don't blame him, man. Is he puking? Damn. That entire soundboard there of like the loud like ambient sound in the background into him puking that transition. Jesus. Making him sick, man. <laughs> Amelia, help him, please. Stop. Uh -oh. oh, that's a bad look. I don't like him when she looks at us like that, bro. That look of concern. That oh my god. Stop. How is he still talking? How is he still fucking yapping? Uh oh. Yes, yes, Are we in trouble? Are we about to get spanked? Are we about to get corrected? Is Amelia about to fucking spank us? What? 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 
pillow. What? But it was set up this episode? Wow. They called a lap pillow early. I thought it would be like way later, but... Also realize this. This lap pillow is not out of romantic intent. This lap pillow is out of pity. Right? This lap pillow is her realizing he's so fucked up, I need to help him. Now, you could say out of love of him. It's more like acquaintance friend. I don't think they're really close yet, but it's, all right. We'll, ta we'll, we'll take a, what's it called? It's not a participation ribbon. A pity lap pillow? I don't know. I'll still take it, though. Yeah. That angle, bro. Okay, no looking up. I just buried my fucking head into her pet, bro. <laughs> Fuck with the sideways. I'm, I'm turning my head 90 degrees once more. You didn't. You just need it right now. Yeah, you need to stop. Chill the fuck out. Like, I don't know, like 15 minutes ago in the episode? She can't. Oh, he's gonna start crying now. Because, like, he doesn't have anyone to go, like, talk to or rant about because of the hand grabbing his heart. But even if Emilia doesn't get the answers, right, this is kind of like a way of letting you know, like, you've worked really hard, you've suffered so much, like, have some time of, you know, respite right now. Let it out, bro. ASMR! Bro, the power of ASMR lap pillow. Literally going through all the different fucking loops. All the pain and suffering, let that shit out. The soundtrack. That's so true. Well, I don't know, but compared to his neat life, right? Like, he is so desperate right now. He's trying so fucking hard. <laughs> Look that like that ever again. From like Rem, maybe? Ram? Basically, all the shitty things that's happened, everything, even like the shriek of Ram screaming as Rem died, Ram. <laughs> is this Amelia singing, by the way, in the soundtrack? I'm not sure, but the voice actors of this show just goes fucking crazy. Last episode, too, like, every time Subaru actually lets out his genuine, authentic emotions, it's just, like, so impactful. Bad boy. A little pinch there. <laughs> please go easy. <laughs> no more of them. No more of that mace, please. Stop. Stop. Okay. <laughs> Useless for the rest of the day. There we go! See? Other people vouching for Subaru. We need Betty to talk good shit. We need Emilia, Puck. Like, everyone needs to, like, understand that, like... He is not a suspicious person. He looks very suspicious. But if we have, you know, someone like Emilia saying that, so it's gonna give him a little bit more confidence. Yeah, we still have to go burn down that village. We still have to do that, remember. Yes. And that, honestly, he probably thinks that she was so cringe. But like, that moment is probably what got him closer to Amelia than anything else he's ever done so far. Now, that first run, I'm saying that first run in episode 1, that was fantastic. But like, every time he tries to raise her up, it's just cringe, mega cringe. But the thing that he thinks is cringe is actually the thing that's working. How ironic. <laughs> Spinning Betty. <laughs> Spinning Betty. <laughs> yeah, we're tight, aren't we? <laughs> Beako. <laughs> A new nickname? No more Betty? We got Beako now? Lil Bea. Beako. <laughs> Because, like, Ko is, like, Kohai, right? Beako, Lil Bay, Beako, got it. Alright, Beako. They're vaulting. Her little... <laughs> bro. Betty Peak, bro. 
bow sagaria. Help, help me, Butchaka, my no tega carita. Noroino kenda. There we go. Let's prevent it. Askan, so I kida. Nara, Noroina hats those through mine. Hats those through mine, no jutsu skinner, a mitskero koto adekiru no. The kakirunda. Jujutsu new sons I suruka. One rule. Hotsu no rule. Oh, tai shoto no se shoku. Physical contact. The, the, the shaman ball talk theory is... Mm, I mean, the, the bite! Mm, just... Okay. I've only touched the villagers at the base of the mountain. Okay. Yes! Village! Yes! What do you think? Missing link! Yes! Because Rem went to the village. We need to just burn down that... Fucking village, dude. Burn down the village, and at least this one will know if we die from a curse or not. It will be hilarious, though, if we get locked in. Imagine we do a war crime. And then... <laughs> we, we lock into a new checkpoint, and we can't go back to save the village in the pursuit of experiment. <laughs> you really went there instead, exactly, right? <laughs> Everything points to the village. Thank you. Thank you. Pull that fucking hair, bro. I want, I want to do that. Boing, boing, bro. I want to pull that hair. Dorowazu. We didn't get to burn down the village yet. Hizamakura Hizamakura da wa ne. Yeah, they all know. <laughs> He's doing this fucking pose right now. Yeah, it was the lap pillow, lap pillow. Embarrassing. Saw you fucking cry, ball your eyes out. Yes. Have we seen this Amelia drip before? I can't remember if, she, if we saw this last time. Is it a new outfit? I I, I don't know. Amelia got such nice clothing. Dude, I just realized like we cannot fuck this up. Like this is the run where we secured a lap pillow. This is probably one of the best runs in terms of like gaining Amelia's affection and vice versa. Like, this needs to be the run. Like, oh my god. Like, and, and no one has died. Rem has suspicions, but I think Amelia's vouch is gonna be enough. Like, please, this needs to be the run. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's better. There it is. He learned! They're not letting this go. The lap pillow joke is here to stay, and that's the punishment. Like, right? <laughs> right, we gotta keep this run going, but that also means we're gonna continuously get roasted by these two at the lap pillow. Yes. Let's go burn down that village. Let's go fuck those kids up. Let's burn it all down. Alright. Still calling us Barusu. Ram and Ram? That's not bad at all. We got Ram and Ram both together? Pretty flowers? Let's go. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. And there it is. I cried. Cried my lungs out. And stopped crying. Because the lap pillow saved me. What a nice episode. Man. This is way better. I thought that the despair would continue. But last episode, as Subaru did gain the motivation to, you know, work hard again and realize that Rem and Ram aren't monsters, you know, they were there for him. And he needs to go save them too, because, you know, Rem did die due to the potential shaman in the village, right? So today's episode was uplifting. It's looking like we're back to progress. There was some important lore mentioned. The gate we already knew from before, Ramji, I think, explained about that ship. Subaru does have a gate. I'm assuming everyone is just born with the gate, even if you're an Isekai character. And his element's affinity is Shadow, debuffs, which is very fitting with this sinister favoritism from the Witch of Envy. Shamak is one skill that we know, but it's just... We don't really use Shamak. It's just he fucks it up and it's just a smokescreen. There's these Buckaberries or some shit, too, that, you know, revitalizes your mana. Betty gave us a lot of lore. What are the lores that we learned? Well, the most important one is that Satala, the Witch of Envy, devoured the other six witches of the Seven Deadly Sins for whatever reason, because she was envious of them? Who knows? And then uh, dried up half the world. I'm not sure exactly what it means to dry up, but did she Thanos that? She, did she cull the population in half? I don't know. And then in order to defeat Satala, what happened? A dragon that we know, I think we know, 
a hero and a sage that I'm not really too sure about. Together, they sealed Satella away. And I guess right now, the witch's cult is trying to, like, awaken or, like, release the seal on Satella. And Subaru is a key component to this because he is most loved. I don't know most loved, but he's definitely got the favoritism, you know, proven by the witch's stench that gets worth with each iteration. Why would Satella bring him in here? To aid her in getting awakened. I don't know why she picked him precisely. I still would like to go back to the theory of in the cellar in episode one or two, where I think it's episode one when Subaru died, you know, and declared his promise to protect Amelia. And that basically was a wish, wish that was uh, received by Satella and was given the powers. But at that point, that was because I thought Amelia was Satella or some sort of like similarity. That's why I thought that like Satella would give him the power to protect Amelia. Or maybe Amelia is a very important component of Awakening the Witch somehow because she is, you know, half elf and she is silver hair. It could be like like a vessel kind of thing, right? Anytime you need to like, you could like implant the soul of Satella into like Amelia's body. That could be a thing too. And because Subaru is now regressing to protect Amelia, I guess it's in the witch's like, it's, it's better for the witch if there is like a bodyguard for the vessel if we're going that direction. I think that could make sense. I think that's actually making a lot of sense. I'm gonna stick with that one for now. And then, what else is there? We had a lot of L's because like we're trying way too hard to the point that I thought this is gonna be ruined run. But lap pillow saves the day, man. A single fucking lap pillow. It's Amelia's lap pillow though. And he cries and he cries and the voice acting is just supreme, man. Voice acting from Subaru anytime he gets so raw with the emotions. It's just, it just fucking hits. And now, you know, they vouch for us. We learn about the shaman potentially in the village. And we got a date with both Rem and Ram in next episode. Hopefully, better happy progressions and we burn down the village. That's it from me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time, take care.